let's face it. I'd like to answer a long overdue question by uh, Christy Stenstrom. It was a question that is relevant to many, many women. And uh, I won't go into all the details, but basically the question involves uh, tamoxifen, estrogen, uh, and hormone uh, blockade during uh, estrogen positive breast cancer. And uh, of course, most uh, oncologists will recommend tamoxifen or arimidex or some other way to modify uh, estrogens in, uh, as they uh, seem to uh, stimulate breast tissue and cause the growth of the cancer. You know, the question had to do with, can I eat soy? Can I, are there things I can do naturally? I'm eating an organic diet. And uh, this is a very, very important question. And I'd like to discuss it. It involves men as well, um, amazingly enough. And that is, um, the thing to understand about, about estrogen and all hormones, really, is that all hormones function in balance, uh, just the way nature does, you know, just like we need day and night. Um, we need uh, the opposites. It's the opposites of things. It's the polarity of things that allow uh, balance and health. And in all of nature, we'll find in all of biochemical processes that whatever promotes something, there'll be something to take it away. And that's just the way nature works. Um, uh, because neither one is good. Both are required, and it's the balance. So estrogen requires progesterone to balance it out. In general, there's a lot of other things that are involved in uh, hormone balancing. For example, with um, um, estrogen-positive breast cancer, uh, what happens in these situations is not that estrogen's a bad thing. Um, it's just that estrogen has a, a, a quality to make things grow. Uh, Estrogen-sensitive tissue, that is tissues that have um, estrogen receptors will respond to estrogen around them and that whatever, they, for example, if it's breast tissue, if it's uh, ovaries or fallopian tubes or vaginal tissue or any, even hips, there are many, many uh, tissues in the body that respond to estrogens. They require estrogen for their growth. But just as they require that, just as uh, we require night, we also require day. We re require a time for that to, to be undone. So if we look at the normal menstrual cycle, during the first part of the month, which is dominated by estrogen, we see a, a, a growth of the endometrial tissues and the buildup of the tissues. And then uh, when pregnancy does not occur, progesterone dominates the second part, and there's a shedding of it. And in fact, the morning after pill is, is progesterone-based. And um, so what happens with uh, our diets and our lifestyles, uh, unfortunately, we live in a very estrogenic environment. And so many uh, xenoestrogens or estrogen-like chemicals that are in plastics and pesticides uh, are affecting our estrogen receptors. And also, progesterone is one of the earliest hormones to start to decline as we age. And also, we will have situations where there are anovulatory cycles where there's not enough progesterone produced. And all in all, it contributes to an estrogen-dominant system, which can result in lumpy breasts, fibrocystic breasts, ovarian cysts, etc. And in men, a prostatic hypertrophy, uh, growth of the prostate. Now, so do we need to block the estrogens? Well, in one sense we do, but in the other sense we need to, re to bring about the rebalancing of the estrogen and progesterone uh, in the body so that it can go back. Because remember, health is based on that balance. So, once we have achieved that, we now have to look at the estrogens. There are several different estrogens, but the three main ones are estrone, estradiol, and estriol. And it's estradiol and estrone that are involved in the growth of tumors. Estriol is a very benign estrogen and does not promote the growth. In fact, there are two types of estrogen receptors, alpha and beta. Okay? Um, one is involved in stimulating growth. The other one is not. So it turns out that estriol is actually very protective and can be safely given to a woman with uh, estrogen receptor positive breast cancer. It is the estrogen that is dominates during pregnancy. So estriol creams, estriol um, in a bioidentical, that means sim identical to the way our bodies produce it, bioidentical estriol is very important because it blocks 
the estrogen receptor that stimulates growth. So that's a very, very important thing to do. It's better than tamoxifen. Another thing is, as was mentioned in the, in the Facebook request, was, um, is uh, our soy. Soy is a phytoestrogen. That is, it is an estrogen. It's very similar and can be modified slightly so that it's identical to the estrogens in the human. Um, but unfortunately, if you eat soy in its raw form, in its natural form, it causes lots of problems digestive-wise, which is why all ancient cultures fermented their soys. And so a lot of the dishes that we know of uh, that the Japanese eat, and by the way, Japanese had a very, very low incidence of breast cancer, uh, and they eat this all the time. Okay, the only time that soy became an issue is when the American public or the American marketing and uh, uh, industries got a hold of it and made everything out of soy. Soy, soy milk, soy uh, cereal, soy ice cream, soy everything like this, and it was unfermented. Okay, it caused all sorts of problems. But the fermented soy easily gets in and is able to block the receptor that would normally cause the growth. So fermented soy products, natto, miso, tempeh, these are extremely important. They will block it. Um, there is a well-known fermented soy product out there. It's expensive, but it's very good. Uh, I'm not going to mention it because I'm not here to sell products. But um, fermented soy can be gotten naturally or you can get preparations of it. So these are important and they're more important than taking synthetic analogs of hormones and they, because they don't have the side effects. They're produced by nature and therefore they function naturally without causing unwanted side effects. So yes, um, there are absolutely ways to deal with the estrogen receptor positive breast cancer without having to resort to synthetic chemicals.